Hi, I'm Jim Smyrnitopoulos, and today we're going to talk about multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes. Part 1. What are they? We have no significant disclosures to report. Multiple endocrine adenopathy, or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes, are autosomal dominantly inherited disorders that involve inactivation of regulatory genes. These patients develop multiple neuroendocrine tumors, or NETs. These include anterior pituitary adenomas, both micro and macro adenomas, parathyroid adenomas, or hyperplasia, medullary thyroid cancer, thymic and bronchial carcinoids, pancreatic or gastroduodenal neuroendocrine tumors, adrenal cortical and medullary neoplasms, and neck thoracic and abdominal paragangliomas. These MEN syndromes uh, include up to eight or nine or ten different disorders, but we're going to focus on four of them instead of doing the entire alphabet soup of all of these diseases. So we're going to concentrate on MEN1, 2A, and 2B, and 2B in the past has been called MEN3. These diseases also have eponyms. They're all named after dead white European men. MEN1 is Wormer's syndrome, 2A is Sippel's syndrome, and 2B is wagenmann frobos disease. How can we remember these different multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes? Well, if we think about MEN1, these patients develop pituitary adenomas, parathyroid hyperplasia and parathyroid adenomas, and pancreatic or gastroduodenal tumors. Notice that these all start with the letter P. So MEN1 is sometimes called the 3P syndrome, in addition to being called Wormer's syndrome. So when we think about the 3Ps, we want to remember pituitary, parathyroid, and pancreatic islet cell tumors, but these tumors may also occur in the wall of the stomach or the duodenum. We may also have, in addition, cutaneous lesions, including angiofibroma and collagenomas, lipomas, adrenal cortical tumors that may be the result of ACTH secretion by a pituitary adenoma or may be autonomous adrenal cortical adenomas, carcinoid tumors, and other CNS tumors including meningioma and ependymoma. MEN1 is an autosomal dominant disorder with a prevalence of 2 to 3 per 100,000, about the same as von Hippel-Lindau disease. The gene has been mapped out to 11Q13. The penetrance is about 100% by age 50, with most of the patients having parathyroid adenomas or hyperplasia. 10 to 70% will have pituitary adenomas, which are usually prolactin-secreting tumors, although they may produce growth hormone and ACTH. 30 to 75% of the patients will have pancreatic or gastroduodenal neuroendocrine tumors. And the most significant of these in terms of morbidity and symptomatology are gastrin secreting tumors or gastrinomas. About 85% will also have facial angiofibromas, which, while very similar to those that occur in tuberous sclerosis, are usually far less numerous than in that other disorder. The diagnostic criteria include the major lesions, pituitary adenoma, parathyroid disease, and pancreatic or duodenal neuroendocrine tumors, and two of these are required. And familial MEN requires that you have one of the major diseases and a first-degree relative. So as Yoda used to always say, always do there are. When we think about MEN2, this is primarily a disease of the medulla, of the thyroid and the medulla of the adrenal gland. Well, what do I mean by that? These patients develop medullary thyroid cancer and they develop pheochromocytoma or medullary adrenal tumors. So MEN2 is a medullary disease. MEN2B is very similar to MEN2A but adds the presence of mucosal neuromas on the lips and the tongue and a marfanoid body habitus. So MEN2B is a medullary disease with skin lesions, and the patients may also have ganglioneuromatosis of the intestines. The diagnostic criteria for MEN2 include having medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, adrenal medullary or other pheochromocytomas, and some of these patients may also have parathyroid abnormalities, which is a little bit confusing because it gets into the realm of MEN1. 
Patients with MEN2B have a morphinoid habitus and mucosal neuromas. And there is a third related disorder, which is familial inheritance of medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, but without any of the other conditions that we have described. Again, Yoda says, oh, it's two there are. MEN2A and 2B are both autosomal dominant. 2A is far more common with a prevalence of approximately 1 in 30,000. It's due to a germline mutation in the RET gene, 10Q11, and an incredibly high risk of medullary thyroid cancer. About half the patients will get a pheochromocytoma. About 80% of all the MEN2A and 2B patients have MEN2A. About 5% have MEN2B, so it is far less common. And about 15% of the patients with this mutation will only have a medullary thyroid cancer. Sipple's disease is the eponym for MEN2A. And Wagenman Frobos is the eponym for MEN3B. And again, in MEN2B or MEN3, the choice is yours, these patients have mucosal neuromas, they have unusual facies with a high arched palate and a morphinoid habitus, and they may also have gastroenteric ganglioneuromas. The treatment for the patients with any of the MEN2 mutations is a prophylactic thyroidectomy typically performed under the age of 5. So should we call it MEN3? Or should we call it MEN2B? And how do we tell them apart? To be or not to be? That is the question. But perhaps ganglioneuromas and neuromas are the answer. Which raises an interesting question. Many authors have suggested that Abraham Lincoln actually had MEN2B. He had a somewhat morphinoid habitus, and he also had lesions on his lips that appear in these old photographs to be mucosal neuromas. I'll leave that discussion to you and your consultant, Dr. Google. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I want to thank you for your attention, and I hope everyone has a very joyous holiday season.